In this video, we will go over five different assessments for the flexibility component of fitness. The first three tests shown will deal with lumbar flexion, which is the standard sit and reach test, the YMCA sit and reach test, and the chair sit and reach test. The Thomas test deals with flexibility of the hip flexors, and the straight leg raise test deals with flexibility of the hip extensors. Before testing, the participant should remove his or her shoes and perform a short warm-up of approximately 5 minutes of moderate aerobic activity, followed by a few selected flexibility exercises. It is also recommended that the participant refrain from fast and jerky movements. All seat and reach tests deal with lumbar flexion, or flexion of the lower back. For the standard sit and reach test, you will need a yoga mat and a seat and reach box, or also known as a flexometer. For this test, the participant sits without shoes and the soles of the feet flat against the flexometer at the 26 cm mark. Make sure the participant's back is on the wall, the back of the knees should be on the floor and the hands should be together as he performs the reach. The participant should slowly reach forward with both hands as far as possible, holding the position for approximately 2 seconds. At the end, the best of two trials should be recorded. According to the ACSM, these are the classifications for the sit and reach test. For the YMCA sit and reach test, you will need a yoga mat, a yardstick, and adhesive tape. A yardstick is placed on the floor and tape is placed across it at the right angle to the 15 inch mark. The participant sits with the yardstick between the legs, with the legs extended at right angles to the tape line on the floor. Heels of the feet should touch the edge of the tape line and be about 10 to 12 inches apart. The participant should slowly reach forward with both hands as far as possible, holding the position for approximately 2 seconds. Fingertips can be overlapped and should be in contact with the measuring portion of the yardstick. Here you will see the classifications according to the YMCA for the yardstick sit and reach. The chair sit and reach test is usually performed on people with past injuries, flexibility issues, or older adults of 60 years or more. For the sit and reach test, you will need a folding chair that has a seat height of 17 inches and a ruler. Place the folding chair against a wall for stability and have your client sit on the front of the edge of the seat. The client extends the leg being tested in front of the hip, with the heel of the foot and the ankle dorsiflex approximately 90 degrees. With the extended leg as straight as possible, the hands on top of each other, the client slowly bends forward at the hip joint, keeping the spine as straight as possible and the head in normal alignment with the spine. The client reaches down the extended leg trying to touch the toes and holds the position for 2 seconds. Place the ruler parallel to your client's lower leg and administer two practice trials, followed by two test trials. The Thomas test assesses the flexibility of the hip flexors. For this test, you will need a yoga mat. Have the participant in supine position laying on the mat. The participant brings one leg, the collateral leg or the leg that is not being tested, in the direction of the chest just to the point where the lumbar spine is snug to the floor. If the tested leg remains in contact with the floor during the maneuver, the hip flexors of that leg are adequately flexible. If the tested leg raises, its hip flexors are likely to be inflexible. Finally, record whether the hip flexors in the right and the left legs are flexible or inflexible. The straight leg raise test assesses the flexibility of the hip extensors. For this test, again you will need a yoga mat and a goniometer. Have the participant lay on the mat in supine position. Be sure the lower back is snug against the floor. The tester raises one of the participant's legs while ensuring that the other leg remains extended or flat into the floor. Oh, yeah. Measure the angle of flexion, the range of motion, with a goniometer by placing its axis on the greater trochanter. 90 degrees is a desirable range, but a minimum angle of 80 degrees is also acceptable. Record the angle and report whether the range of motion is acceptable or unacceptable. 